Uh oh, it's Monday. Uh oh. You mean uh -oh. hooray? Uh oh, hooray. Hooray, hooray. This is the day we do seven hours of programming on twitch.tv slash planetat. That's the sequel to hip hop hooray. Uh oh, hooray. <laughs> uh oh, I guess we're at work. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll just be the three of us today. Oh, really? No, no, Andrew Main? No, he's, uh, he's sleeping with the fishes. Sorry? Uh, he's, he's been murdered by the mob? <laughs> <laughs> I just started watching The Sopranos. <laughs> Have you seen The Sopranos? You know, uh, it was, uh, by the time I heard about it, it was far enough along that it felt like, eh, I missed it, I'll get around to it. And then, um, and then all the times that I wanted to get around to it, um, it was de it was like post the ending of it and it was mm -hmm. decreasing in cultural significance so mm. i just never got around to it interesting uh i i just started watching it the other day because uh the do by friday podcast which i listen to one of their every week they have a chat they give themselves a challenge to do over the next week and it was watch the first episode of the sopranos and they just had such glowing things about it um and it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, it's, hey, turns out really well made. Yeah. <laughs> turns out uh, its reputation for being one of the finest moments in television history earned. earned. How about that? It's earned. Um, and just like, you know, uh, it ages very well for being a very 90s story, you know? Um, like they, they were mentioning on the, on the podcast, like, uh, it's kind of, it's almost, it's, it's like half played for a joke when he is prescribed Prozac um, because like oh. because it was novel and yeah yeah dude uh, when when Prozac first hit I remember listening to uh, AM talk radio to go to sleep and I was mm -hmm. listening to the uh, the Tom Snyder show which I shared a story about appearing on at the age of 17 um, but there was definitely like a full-on assault from Scientologists to to call every talk radio anything you could and talk about how terrible all uh, psychoreactive drugs were wow. and and how psychiatry is a scam and awful and blah 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 crazy hello hello yo what's going on fam oh goddamn i'm feeling it it's feeling good also uh uh when did when did andrew die and what did he die of uh Maine? What yeah. did Andrew die of? Yeah. Oh, a broken heart. <laughs> it's really weird. Since he seems to have a really healthy relationship. <laughs> I know. No, it was mostly uh, you know, uh, he was he was, was really sad it was, about it was the mostly uh It was mostly it was mostly Westworld. He's just really disappointed in it. the current season. Don't don't <sighs> You know the worst part about Westworld is I mistrust it enough that it becomes my fall asleep to watching thing. Yeah. Which means I fall asleep to watching it. Then the following day, because my job is to talk about Westworld. Yeah. I have to go back and watch it again every five minutes. Thinking, I did that three times last thinking, night. Oh yeah. No, no, I did see this. <laughs> All right, now we're in new territory. And then they say yeah. something. I'm like, Oh no. Yeah. I remember this. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this the part where the robot says something cryptic? God damn it. <laughs> oh, but now I it's not I even, it's not even a cryptic show anymore. It's just 24. It's just alias. It's uh, just a, it's just a thriller. They, they have a framework now where it's like, uh, oh, you thought it was bad when only robots could come back from the dead. What about all humans? What if everything you know is a lie? Literally, n don't trust like like fucking dogs learn to not trust their masters, and that's where I'm at now. It's like, let me get it. Uh, whatever you're saying now. In three episodes, it won't matter. Got it. Lesson learned. Gotcha. Cool. What a fun time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you watch the Beastie Boys talk? Oh, oh goodness. I don't want to burden Bryce <laughs> with a retread of it. <laughs> no, 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 please. It's fine. I definitely lied. Oh, no, tweeted. no, no, no. Because, because I, we have, we have, uh, we have conversation for the show 
because it will be my pick because I have complicated feelings about Good. it. Good. Well, okay. tell me all about it and how bad it is and how somehow I'm morally right for paying for it but refusing to watch it because fuck that platform. It is the most un-Apple anything I've ever seen with, a la with an Apple logo on it. It was fucking awful. It was terrible. Wait, so wait, you didn't watch it or you did, I did watch not. it? I did not. I did not. In fact, I refused to. I, I invested 30 minutes into trying to watch it on the platform of my, of my choice, a PC with a giant screen on the wall. I reached a point of frustration and overchargement for what was supposed to be free that caused me to spend the next 20 minutes tweeting and texting about how fucking shitty that whole experience was. And then I hit a decision gate and I decided, you know what? I'm not even going to give you. The Beastie Boys deserve better than for me to see whatever this is in this circumstance. It was, it was a bit like watching the Star Wars The Force Awakens, where, like, I'll watch it, oh, but yeah. it's not going to yeah, be yeah, like yeah. this. And I just walked away. Wow. Yes. Yes, I remember that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, then, yeah. Then, then I'll just give my thoughts yeah, on, ruin on the everything. documentary. Whatever. If it's garbage, it's garbage. Whatever. It's not garbage... We'll, we'll talk about it. I mean, yeah, we're, we'll we're about to do a podcast. I, I'd rather not repeat. I'd rather not repeat the take. I'd rather okay. the yeah, okay. the take. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, believe you me, I feel your pain, Brian. Watching any iTunes or Apple stuff on PC, you wouldn't think it's 2020, but here it is. I'm I'm really glad to hear you say that because have you tried to watch any of the stuff via their browser? Because their browser, the browser Apple TV interface, is even worse. Okay, so uh, I am really glad to hear you say that because your texts were very kind to Apple, and then and then you kind of got cut off by Tom Merritt saying like, "Brian just wants to vent," and I'm like, "God damn right, I want to vent. <laughs> yeah. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck all this." <laughs> yeah, uh, there there was a little bit of that, uh, but it, yeah, because uh, I, I I think I mentioned this when Apple TV came out. I tried to watch a lot of the Apple TV stuff via the via the browser because they have it. Uh, and I would never be able to watch more than a minute of something before it got stuck in a loading loop, which is like, come on, you gotta, you gotta not do that. Right. Um, so, oh, well, oh, well, uh, let's see. Hello, everybody. Uh, everybody looking good. Justin, uh, are we coming in good? No issues on that? Uh... Oh, no. Yeah. This sounds fucking ideal. And, uh, I think we, we're, we're all on in-ear monitors now. Yep. Oh, yeah, oh, shit, you did. That. You got you got the things. How do you uh, like them? Oh, did you get the same uh, ones? Uh, yeah, same ones. Uh, you know, there's still a little rejiggering that I got to do um, because it is a different setup because I'm bypassing my board um, when I go to the in-ear uh, stuff. But uh, in general, it's fucking great. Nice. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. But yeah. I also I went I, into my like gigantic crate of uh, stuff I got from BitTorrent when they decided that they weren't a news network anymore, and I just got all their. <laughs> What's funny is equipment. I totally thought you meant uh, like pirated software. <laughs> you would think, you would think, but no, the free shit I got from BitTorrent was literally from their headquarters, and uh, and so like whenever I want to order something, I just know I'm like. Ah. I know I need a little extender for the monitors because it needs an extender. Uh, do I order it from Amazon or do I dig through this gigantic crate of cords? Because I'm almost positive <laughs> that there's a gigantic production style extender for for the you know a, a monitor like that. And uh, so I did. I was very proud of myself and I found it fairly quickly. Nice. Nice. All righty. Well... Good there. Everybody oh. uh, loaded up on their SpaceX news. I think Elon Musk made a tweet. Oh, geez. Let's do it. He Let's announced it, the baby. results of a test that was either positive or negative. I saw that news story about five minutes ago and thought, I can't speak much on this. <laughs> so that will not be on our lineup today. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I've said this the last couple times I've done the show. I got kind of a good number of stories here, so we don't need to spend okay. too, too long on, on anything. But just in case people don't honest. know, we support all space companies. We want everybody to win. We don't have a favorite. 
You are spicy today. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, let's start the show. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I am, of course, Bryce Castillo, joined as always with Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. And Justin Robert Young. Hey. Uh, this is uh, the Science Meets uh, Fiction podcast that we always do, just the three of us, every week here on uh, WeirdThings.com. So, uh, oh, yeah. me, always in studio together, too. That's the other thing. People may not remember. Like, nobody ever calls in. We're all three in the same studio. That's right. Yep. Yep. This is it. I'm here in Austin, Texas, doing the show with you guys. <laughs> That's what happens all the time. Yeah. That's why it sounds so good. That's right. So, uh, uh, guys, uh, I don't know if you've been outside lately, but you shouldn't. Uh, there, there, there's, there's a pandemic going on. Oh, here. okay. I was about to oh, say okay. we definitely Good. shot outside all day yesterday. What's going on? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Can I can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. How big of a faux pas is is it to call it a global pandemic? Because oh, obviously no. it's redundant, right? But is it like, oh, like you're ATM a machine. big fat idiot redundant or is it ATM machine? No, 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 no. It is exactly as much of a crime as it is to call it heavy metal because all metals are heavy. But it's more fun to say heavy metal. Forget If you're going to bother to live through a global pandemic, you might as well call it a global pandemic at every single I, time you, you get to say it. It's yeah, that's what I my instinct is to keep saying global pandemic. But then also I'm like, I'm like, oh, but I know because uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, Brian, but we speak for a living on the Internet. Yes. And when you speak for a living on the Internet. You tend to have people remind you that things are right or wrong or uh, silently keep it uh, within them before they pour forth in some kind of public fashion. So I, I just don't know. Bryce, where are you at on this? Uh, You know. Global, the my worry with global pandemic is not the redundancy, but almost the sensationalism. The 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 worry of like, oh well, he said global pandemic. Is he really trying to just rile me up right oh now? Oh my god! Do I, see, you guys are misunderstanding all of this. This is oh. what's great about it is that it is the perfect excuse for literally anything. Like, ah, I'm sorry that this was due last night, but it came in this morning. It's just with the global pandemic and all. There's a big, there's like, a big a one going your, on your, outside. Your, your deadline doesn't sound so important, does it? But even more than just pandemic, I guess you're right. It does, it, it does have that flourish to it. Yeah, global well, yeah. pandemic. It rolls off the tongue. Global pandemic. I, I, I tweeted out uh, my sentiment of like I'm genuinely torn uh, 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 between my my desire to look uh, trim and and proper, like I've got my act together, but also the acknowledgement that in my entire life, no, there will never ever hopefully be a time like this where it's more forgivable for me to be shaggy than than yeah. right now and it's sure. like this is it wouldn't wouldn't it be a shame if i if i was clean shaven looking good behind not taking advantage X32. of the situation finding all of your silver linings yes you know uh well you know it, it, it is important that people stay inside you know uh I, i've got a little bit of a question here for you guys how would you okay. uh say in your community in your neighborhood on your block whatever what what is something that you would do to try to keep people from going out at night, hanging out, loitering around on the street, or uh, you know, just what what would you do if you were tasked with trying to keep people inside at night without setting a big law, making a curfew, you know, playing the the, the right, purse so side? I, I, I'm gonna yeah, say that you're, off the table is the uh, is the drones going up and down the street saying, "This is pandemic patrol. Go back inside." I, that's an option. I think that's an option. I'm just saying, le free of legislation before. Yeah, no, free of, that. of free of at the barrel of a gun. <laughs> like, is there a way that you can keep people inside in some soft social way? All right, in fact, all right, Brian, you are now a a crazy billionaire, hmm. and and you are trying. You don't have any legal recourse at all. You can't call the cops. But you're trying, you believe very much that people need to stay in their house and you have infinite money. How would you make people stay in their house? I would hire three individuals to sit at a table with X's in front of them. And I would buy a PA system and wherever they were in front, they would just start commentating on their hot takes about how they judge their appearance 
how they handle things, whether they, and occasionally somebody will hit a buzzer and say, I want them out of here. This sucks. And then I would hire extras to just immediately boo in the background. And uh, I feel like between all of that, it would make it a fairly unpopular place for people to go. <laughs> a roving people would gang. just be like, yeah, America's like got screw talent. this. I'm staying inside. <laughs> These guys suck. Exactly. You get a Howie Mandel look-alike to uh, host this. Uh, I mean, hell, I could probably afford Howie Mandel if I'm a billionaire. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I, that is an interesting solution. That that it in if the goal is to keep people inside, you would spend a lot of money and hire a bunch of people to create a spectacle outside. <laughs> but uh, I, I I appreciate the hustle. I would just have something like, uh, uh. I, I would make it more Halloween Horror Nights. So maybe the same idea, but instead it's just like, oh, there's a pandemic, but also wolves are attacking people. <laughs> and just like every once in a while, like, oh, I defy this order. Screw you, 1776, my freedom ra- Oh my God, ah, this wolf, it's ripping my arm off. Oh God. Like that'll keep people in because they're not going to want to be attacked by a wolf. That's an interesting idea, Justin. Scaring, scaring the public. Now, now we have yeah. seen kind of similar uh, what what economists call nudges when it comes to like uh, there were there were teenagers that were gathering around bus stops, so they started playing classical music at at bus stops. The another just so story is teenagers hanging around certain areas. They would put up uh, lights with pink filters that accentuated the uh, 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 the zits that they had on their face because oh, wow. a lot of teenagers yeah. have acne. And so it was just oh. like, like I don't want to be there. I, I've seen what I look like there. Uh, so, so I'm assuming we're talking about that kind of nudge, right? That's that's really clever. If if have you ever done that? Like uh, like if chased off a bunch of teenagers from a bus stop by putting a pig filter on a light. Look, I don't. <laughs> if you, I'm sorry. Am I being detained? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I have my pocket constitution right here. <laughs> no, ever take a like a selfie of yourself in front of a just a red light? Uh, like if you if you use the camera app on your phone, it'll look really nice. But if you use something like Snapchat, which like kind of has to do doesn't is, deals it, with the raw data. Yeah, it looks terrible. Yeah. Um. Okay, that's a really interesting idea. Kind of kind of nudging people, really like oh, suddenly man. pushing Wouldn't them. Wouldn't that be great? It, oh, okay, hold on. So, so what would you do for at so, night? So, hold on. Just so press. imagine what you do is you put a bunch of, bunch of cameras around yeah. that's and they just have placards that say this camera is live and it is a very wide angle lens <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or 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 a very telephoto lens or whatever people are most afraid of. Which one makes you look the fattest? So wait, hold on. What if those drones, we were joking about the fact that, you know, uh, there's been some speculation that some police departments want to have drones to enforce social distancing. Uh, instead of them, like, identifying people, we take that surveillance state element, but all it does is just take unflattering pictures of you. All the drones fly, <laughs> like, low angle, and, like, they're just getting all your chins, and you just always look like crap. And you are, it is like now paparazzi. So, so here's the wow. moral question that we have to deal with, because on the one hand, I actually think that would be amazingly effective, but here in America, uh, we have it, I believe in law that you are not allowed to shame people publicly for their debts. Uh, because number one, it's very, very effective. Number two, it caused people to commit suicide. That whole business of the image of, of like a pilgrim with their hands and arms and neck in a, in a, a stock. Yeah. yeah, that was there oftentimes as like, hey, man, uh, you owed this money. You never paid it. You was, I mean, what's so bad about spending a day in the stockade or whatever? Sure. But the shame was so literally bad. a debtor's prison. Yes. Uh and in fact, I want to say uh, 20 years ago, there was a story in Venezuela of a new program where they would publicly shame debtors with a character called Dr. Diablo in Venezuela, who would show up to people's places of business and and wearing a mask, a devil mask, and shame them for not paying their debts. And it was one of those things that was reported at the time of, oh, what a novel way to get these deadbeats to, you know, pay pay their debts or whatever. But mm -hmm. then the follow-up articles that I read were the ones that said, uh, 
no, 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 no. Shaming people for their debts is so endemic to the uh, American constitutional DNA that that it's literally written into all of our laws that it's like uh, uh, you can either pay your debts or not. Uh, if if you can't pay it, then that's on them for making a bad risk. Uh, but 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 we don't shame our people here. Hmm. Okay. So so then that's a vote against drugs. against public shaming. Against yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, let's let's kind of take it back to kind of Justin's idea earlier about about say a Halloween horror night. Uh, you, you know the village of uh, of Kepu Kepu Kepa Kepa. In uh, Indonesia. Oh, I love it! Yeah. Oh no, it's the best. Uh, well, they uh, they have something uh, interesting uh, called the uh, Pokong. The Pokong. You mind if I show you a clip here? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is from our friends over at Reuters. What is this? Is there audio to go with this? Somebody's. Uh, we got a band playing. We got a band running away when somebody shows up in what looks like a wrapped up corpse about to be dropped off the side of a boat. That's right. Um, the, the audio is just of the reporters telling the story. Um, but uh, this is this is uh, the the Pokong, a, a group of community volunteers who wear bed sheets caked in white makeup, uh, who go out at night and scare the locals who are loitering around <laughs> outside. All right. So this was pre-pandemic. Then, like they already wanted to to scare people back in. And now it has just like uh, uh, created a righteous cause. Uh, this article is only two weeks old. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, so, this, wait, so, so, so this is for the pandemic. This is because of the pandemic. That's right. Uh, oh my god. Why? Why are these motherfuckers outside then? Sorry, I cursed. <laughs> why are these people outside? Uh, because uh, I, it's a very good question. You know, Indonesia is being hit particularly hard uh, by by COVID nineteen. Uh, it, it's one of the hardest hit in Asia. And uh, I I don't know maybe it, whether it's a cultural thing whether people maybe don't don't take it quite as seriously <laughs> but uh, in fact when they first started doing the the pokong uh, people it actually did incentivize people to go out more because they wanted to go see the ghosts and they have they have this very distinctive gait because they are tied up their hands and their legs are tied up so they have to like bunny hop around they can't really walk. Um, <laughs> And so to solve that, they became a kind of surprise patrol. So you wouldn't really know when or where they would be deployed. Uh, and I mean, that seems like <laughs> so that they were people weren't banging, she like you know, like banging pots and pans like they do for essential workers when the ghosts came out every night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this this uh, this feels like this would last about two weeks before all of a sudden your new reaction to seeing these guys would be to try to take a selfie with them and get up close next to them maybe i don't know uh when report when reuters visited the keppa village the supernatural strategy seemed to be working with villagers running off in fright when the ghosts materialized quote since the pokong appeared parents and children have not left their homes and people will not gather or stay on the streets after evening prayers it seems to be working so far hmm. i don't know do you think do you do you think you could beat uh, uh having people go around and in, in sh in no but number one you're 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 limiting the effectiveness of the pokong because if you are just listening to this which most of you are then they are hopping yes. right like like they are bound at the feet so what you really want is for like trained military people to, to be them. creepily like like being as discreet as possible and just terrifying people like I, i'm almost positive that that setup was obviously just uh we're watching this clip of somebody hopping around the corner and then scaring a bunch of people that looks like a setup to yeah. demonstrate what what these people would do with the intended what you really want is, is give them more uh you want to give them more flexibility yeah uh well there you go that's that's supposedly working we'll see maybe, maybe people will just uh i mean maybe you know, you know what uh, I, I i agree we should make it to where the streets are as scary as possible so nobody's on it i propose one day a year there's no crimes that could be <laughs> held against you and anyone could do anything they want then it, those would be some scary streets wouldn't they well wait a minute i mean you're aware that there was a police department that got in trouble because they were playing the purge siren the actual uh, oh were they really yeah did not oh when they yeah. were enforcing the actual curfew <laughs> in uh, crowley louisiana 
Uh, supposedly they had no idea, but you got yeah. go- you got to Google the purge oh, to get the Oh, somebody get at No, no, no. I don't buy that. There's <laughs> zero chance that they just Googled scary siren and that's what they came up with. Somebody thought it would be funny. Somebody thought it would be clever. They love the movie I'm, I, and they I'm realized familiar, very quickly they couldn't. Do I'm not it. familiar enough with the purge, but I, I have to imagine it's as iconic as like the TARDIS sound or whatever. Like, like nobody's, nobody's scraping a pick across... Yeah. Yeah, that's fairly iconic. Yeah, it's not yeah. the same as the full klaxon going all the way up. Yeah. So, there we go. Uh, you know, uh, 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 what is fun and a lot of a lot of good times every week is the Weird Things podcast. Isn't that right, fellas? Oh, hell yeah. You know, uh, ever since we've been doing this, the three of us, for years and years, we've been saying, uh, uh, if you like this, if you enjoy this moment each and every week where we break down uh, weird stories in uh, culture and science, then if you have the extra scratch, kick it our way. What, what, what do you say? Patreon.com slash weird things. Isn't that right, Brian? Kick it our way, what do you say? That's the URL. Don't check that URL because the government owns it. They swiped it out from underneath us, those nefarious bastards. Next thing you know, they're going to declare a no-crime day. Look, you can stop all of this right now by pledging just $1 an episode at patreon.com slash weird things. There we go. Hell yeah. If you do it, you get a bonus RSS feed. Pop it into the player of your choice and you get the After Things podcast before anybody else, baby. That's right. Thank you. Patreon.com slash weird things. Uh, hey, boys, it's me, uh, Bryce Nasa. And uh, <laughs> oh, my God, I've, I've, I've been wondering where you went. I've uh, I've got something uh, very special for you guys. Uh, I've got a, a crack at the dark side of the moon. Uh, can you, uh, I'd like you to pitch me something that you could do with the dark side of the moon, oh, the land. Wait. And you, you might you might win funding. Uh, OK, so uh, my first thought was put a telescope there because then you would be shielded away from all the noise of planet Earth. But then I remembered that. Wait, oh, no, no, the dark side of the moon is always dark. Yeah, no, no, no. I stick to my original plan. Put a telescope there. Put a bird on it. And by that bird, I mean a telescope, a big old radio telescope array. OK, how would you build a telescope? Broadly yeah. speaking, how would you put a telescope? Uh, it, it would be like the very large array here on planet Earth. It would be a bunch of uh, parabolic dishes that uh, that did radio telescopy. Uh, and, and because the moon is tidally locked with planet Earth, the same side is always facing planet Earth, which means the backside is the one that, that would have a giant planetoid-sized shield that would allow you to get a fairly noise-free view of the entire galaxy. Okay, you know that's that's such a good idea. I might accuse you of plagiarism of that one. Oh shoot! Did I get it exactly right? Uh, one of the uh, one of NASA's innovative advanced concepts. Uh, wait, whoa, 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 Bryce, hold on. I want to get my guess. Oh, in. I'm sorry. Please, Justin. Uh, also, what would you do with the dark side of the moon? Silent disco. <laughs> Let's see who's right. <laughs> Nothing but headphones and neon That's as far it. as you can yep. see. Hypothesis. I know it's been a while since we went up to the moon, but the next person who goes, boy, are they going to be pumped when they have a silent disco. Hypothesis. Do AirPods work on the moon? We'll find out. <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, this was one of many projects given funding by the Innovative Advanced Concepts Wait, program. So, so, so I was right because I, I peak promised that I, I, I did not read this, this is, in the news. This is real. Uh, JPL roboticist Saptarshi Bandiopadhyay uh, proposed to build a giant telescope on the far side of the moon in a crater. Oh, this is great. Uh, it, it actually, if you're familiar, it looks like the, the Arecibo uh, giant uh, telescope. Uh, so not, not a very large array, but a single big old dish. And it's already been dug. Uh, yeah. The Arecibo. God, do I have to? I, I hate that I have to say it this way. As featured in Goldeneye. That's probably where you know it from. Goldeneye. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's Maybe fine. the movie Goldeneye's Contact. Fine. Hopefully, oh, yeah, but probably Goldeneye. probably Goldeneye. So the uh, Lunar Crater Radio Telescope, or LCRT, would be an ultra-long wavelength radio telescope capable of capturing some of the weakest signals traveling throughout space. And like you said, Brian, because it's, almost, because it's always on the other side of Earth, it's shielded from... Uh, the ionosphere, from noise, from physical debris. Uh, yeah, I mean that's you. You nailed it uh, in one. You got it in one. I'm I'm surprised and 
and keep keep in mind like like uh, maybe there was something about the way it was phrased that made me instantly think of that but but um i almost wonder if the contest itself wasn't held so that we could all elect clearly the most beautiful baby <laughs> to to office <laughs> there are but not not harley jo- what was that dude's name brett, brett harley Bart jarvis, harley jarvis. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, there are other ideas there are other space ideas including instant landing pads uh exploring the subsurface ocean of Jup- jupiter's moon europa uh using antimatter to slow down interstellar stellar space there are other ideas going on here but uh yeah but none is as close or as simple as this one uh, well, NASA does still consider this to be low within uh, the scope of how close we are technology-wise to, to solve this. Because the, the basic idea involves uh, sending rovers, these de-axle, de-axle rovers, to the moon uh, to, to basically rig up a giant wire system uh, to, to, do, to, to, to set up the structure of this device. I mean, I guess if you pick the right... Um crater then then it almost naturally is is uh, you know a decent parabola mm-hmm. to to collect everything in one spot well that, and that they seem like the craziest thing and they're using a, a mesh so it wouldn't even necessarily be tied to the actual geography of the space it would just have the the head space to suspend oh that's interesting so so if it's a bunch of, bunch of wires uh let's say you're not quite a perfect parabola mm-hmm. then then up on arm 375 you tug it a little bit tighter and it corrects the the arc of it on there yeah so then you're able to make it into a perfect parabola yeah, yeah. and they, they take advantage of these duaxial rovers which we're taking a little bit of a look at here where they're like four wheeled rovers that split apart um and so one side kind of anchors uh, anchors uh, uh, the whole contraption together up the top of the crater, and the other side will actually traverse down or up the crater, uh, connected by a wire. Yeah, that's pretty wild. So it that's looks like crazy. a four four wheeled vehicle, and then suddenly the front part just runs forward and becomes like a sphero or something, yeah. rolls itself down the hill or back. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, congratulations. Uh, uh, hopefully, maybe you can get your proposal in and steal. Uh, your own one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. What? A, oh man, that was the most, <laughs> you buried the lead. I, we were sitting here talking about this life-changing, epic, complete uh, extravaganza, and then you find out that it's that it's the uh, that it's a dual income, no kids, year salary. <laughs> it's phase one. It's fa- There are mo- there are other phases in the IAC <laughs> process. But it's a uh, exploratory. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, we. Yeah. As a planet, the collective we, the Earthians, is it Earthians? Yes. Earthlings? The, the Earth, the Earthanites. The, the human beings. Earth, Earthers, uh, tr- flat uh, Earthers, because we're, we're so even keel. Yeah, that's right. We flattened the curve so hard that we changed our name to the flat Earthers. Yeah. We're Earthers that's it. against coronavirus. That's right. We're all exactly. together. We're the Enough flat of Earthers. You. We're not pointers. We're no, flatters. No, we're flatters. We're flat. Flatten the earth. Yeah. That's our slogan. We'll flatter, we'll flatter you. <laughs> That's uh, right. We're you flatterers. Are. You know what? I like that shirt, Bryce. It looks great. Oh, Thank you. It's very I, yeah, Brian, I uh, think those glasses are very smart. Ah. Justin, I love your very smart jacket. It was very, <laughs> mm, very nice. Wow, like what a bunch of flatterers underneath. we are. Flat <laughs> earthers. So That's it. We as a planet are kind of locked. I love how we just did better PR for flat earth people <laughs> in five seconds <laughs> than they've had for several hundred we, years. We should be like in the spin room for Flat Earth. <laughs> I know. I feel like we should be like, hi, where are the Weird Things podcast? <laughs> a lot of you might be thinking, that's easy. We should have come up with Flatterers over 50 years ago. <laughs> so we, as a planet, are kind of locked in orbit, right? We orbit the sun, as do the other planets, our other neighboring Only planets. Only because we choose to. I mean, look, yeah. uh, if we wanted to, we can get out of this orbit anytime we want. It's just that mm-hmm. we're going to wait for the new Call of Duty to come out first, and then we got to get through that. What would be cooler yeah. than orbiting the sun? I mean... walk. Might as well be walking on the sun. That sounds like, that sounds like <laughs> Gary talk. Gary left a while ago. Oh, he was talking that way, and now he's gone. Now he's sleeping with the fishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also sleeping with exactly. the fishes. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, you know, a planet orbiting a sun, that's fine. But, you know, <laughs> it's the 90s, and we really need a cooler orbit. Folks, I would like to introduce you to Galaxy GSN069. 
very nice. This is 250 million light years away. <laughs> it took me a second to hear it. <laughs> and Keep it contains going. two fascinating objects that are locked into this beautiful eternal dance. Uh, is it Gary? Gary's one of them, isn't it? It's Gary and Bernice. God damn it. I knew it. Gary and Bernice out there yeah. doing their fancy dance like Gary always talked about. He said, Earth's orbit oh, is too electrical. Fancy dancing Gary. So the first object is a dying star uh, in uh, in this galaxy. It is a it was a red giant that was in the you know the beginning phases of death for back a, in the sixties. A moderate sized star. Uh, it starts it used to be on the silver screen, and now he's doing episodes of Knight Rider. Am I right? Oof. That's right. And uh, it would have been on its way, you know, dissipating heat and hydrogen until it met a black hole. Uh oh. And now. Happens a lot, right? Where a star goes into a black hole and then it lights up the sky because of how black holes work. What if it didn't do that? I, wait, sorry. Explain that to me again. Mm -hmm. Like, what if a black hole just wasn't black hole in? Well, no, the black hole is still there. But what if the star was orbiting the black hole? I mean, what else is it going to do? The, uh, so, yeah, okay, I you're don't right. think that we should... I don't think we should star shame. Like that star is just gonna do whatever it wants. Trying to and, think and we of should support it. Some kind of uh, Hollywood celebrity producer relationship about a star orbiting a black hole. Uh, uh, a star is born, starring Lady Gaga. Uh, that that yes. kind of works. Yeah. Well, well, except yeah. for that she. I feel like we should eject from this line of thought. <laughs> <laughs> really, like it is only fraught with peril. <laughs> so this dying star fell into the orbit of the black hole, but not, and it doesn't cross the event horizon. It's about 15 times further away from the radius of the event horizon, um, and so now it orbits the black hole in nine-hour cycles. Every nine hours. What? It orbits this black hole. A star hole. moves around a black hole every nine hours? That's right. That's like a year in their terms. That it would, It's the definition of how we would define a year. I would be like our, yeah. a billion to years old by now. <laughs> nah. That's right. If you were living on this on star? A, on a nine-hour yeah. year? Oh, well, no. The, yeah, that's a good point. Th there's no yeah. way anything can orbit this star. What did I, see, this is Gary talk. So, yeah, this is the way Gary always yeah. was. He was, like, he was like, don't think about that, man. That's Earth-centric thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, more like sinking. Sinking, that's right. So uh, it's only when yeah. the... More like stinking, like this idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, we very rarely take a political stance here on the Weird Things <laughs> podcast. But Gary, this is a bad idea. Would you knock it off? We get it. We get it. You got a nice star. Exactly. All it's right. spinning yeah. around a black Gary, hole. Gary, please. Gary, knock. I mean, we all let you go for a while, but now it's just stars and black holes. It's enough. Enough, Gary. Jesus. We get it. You did it. Good for you. That's that's a fine Good. circle you're doing. Good for you. Ah, da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, along this nine hour cycle, it's only when it gets the when its orbit is the closest to the black hole that it can it just ekes out little bits of material from now the now a white dwarf. And most of that ends up on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> that's that's right <laughs> and uh, uh so what's interesting is we found this out uh this was because it is giving out x-rays as as a part of this cycle the chandra x-ray observatory noticed that every nine hours it was receiving this x-ray signal from 250 million light years away like it's 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 kind of insane that we know this much. So like this, is extraordinary like, this is pumping blast. out. Yeah. At, yeah, this is pumping out an extraordinary amount of energy, uh, s similar to like a, a, a gamma ray burst or something. Where, but it happens to be in the X-ray spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what's interesting is, at least per uh, the researcher who studied this. Uh, here's his quote. In astronomical terms, the event is only visible to our current telescopes for a very short time, about 2,000 years. So unless we were extraordinarily lucky to have caught this one, there may be many more that we are missing. Hear uh, that, Gary? Not so special after oh, all. <laughs> Everyone at that Gary. high at 4 a.m. had the same idea. Mm. And now the emperor has no clothes, huh, Gary? Mm. A common, a, a common occurrence 
a, a no more rare than a two-sided penny. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know. This is—I think this is such a fascinating story. The fact that there is a, an in uh, there is a star, you know, that is it, orbiting a black hole. It hasn't. It hasn't necessarily. No, that been is crazy. That is that is insane. In. How far away is this? Two hundred fifty million light years away. So, a black hole. Uh, I, I I would imagine, mathematically speaking, I mean, just as likely a thing to have an orbit is as a star or whatever. But yeah. but a black hole has such a steep gravity well that it's just the rarity it's like things tend to either go right in or cruise right on by right like you don't have the ability to a, slingshot past it yeah it's yeah. it's it's a thinner band of success than than something a little more loosey-goosey I, re I really like that um you know you think about space time that fabric as everything made of latex and you just sort of barely pull something down and then you roll a marble around you're going to get these big sweeping arcs or whatever but if you pull that you know way down then it's like that marble is either going in or 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 done so mm -hmm. so it's i guess in the entire galaxy it would be a statistical certainty that we would see something like this sooner or later but mm -hmm. but a, a rare gem nonetheless yeah uh supposedly they believe that uh the now white dwarf will continue to orbit uh orbit the, the black hole and eco away material for trillions of years. I'm going to guess that there's no stable way for there to be a third body to orbit that star. I'm, I'm going to guess that... Uh, Probably not, given how fast it goes around and... The <laughs> nine hours! It does a hours. lap around the... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 well, and also, like, um, uh, that being such a narrow gravitational band that it can hang in, mm -hmm. like, like just the wideness of, of even, like, a Mercury-distant planet, I would imagine that's going to get sucked into the black hole really fast. Yeah, or it might have to be some sort of perfect orbit where it's always on the opposite side... Of, yeah. of the black hole uh but it's fascinating you know uh, uh i wonder if we're gonna find any more of those over the next trillion years who knows do you know something that we don't know what's that <laughs> name one thing gary i mean bryce uh, oh no oh, I don't <laughs> oh no what a reveal oh. <laughs> uh you know some scientists believe uh that a meteor that meteors hit earth at an average of 17 times a day that doesn't sound unreasonable. How how big are we defining a meteor as? Um, I think anything that that makes it all the way down contact. to the surface. Yeah. Surface. Okay. So so not not shooting stars, but actual you know rocks actual that, that bonk old ladies on the head. Right. Yeah. Um, but for all of that, right? We don't really have material reports of anyone dying from a meteorite or a meteor. I assume that is true, but it's so hard to believe given. The numbers. I mean, it's tough, right? Like, you know, think about Earth's well, land mass. Yeah, but there's like so much land, mm -hmm. right? And so like much we ocean. are, we are, yeah, we are biased to thinking that like all that matters is the stuff that we are looking at. But even in our, you know, you you drive from uh, Austin to San Antonio and you're looking at so much just totally unoccupied land that like you probably wouldn't know if something landed in there, let alone. Uh, you know, hitting somebody, right? Let alone killing them. Yeah. And even if that did happen, having someone notice the event and confirm, you know, that it is from an extraterrestrial, uh, extra, yeah, extra space rock, right? Yeah, Confirming rock. it's also a space rock. Uh, yeah. fact, hey man, is that space rock? We'll turn it up. <laughs> 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 beep pop, boop pop, boop beep pop. <laughs> These are the space rock songs we rock. Boop, pop, beep, pop, beep, pop, hey man, boop. I didn't know that Space Rocks was the Teletubbies. <laughs> I'm too high to recognize anything. Anyone yeah. seen Gary around? <laughs> Get bent. We're playing Space Rock. <laughs> beep, pop, beep, boop, beep, pop, beep, beep, pop, beep, pop, beep, pop, beep. Pop. <laughs> That's a Screw you, Dad. <laughs> you don't know my Space Rock. Slams the door. <laughs> you've got a. He's he's, pop, pop. You've got an behind astronaut helmet coming out with a mullet behind it. <laughs> behind the yeah. door, Genesis starts playing her sticks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in fact, a fun fact: the only confirmed injury directly by a meteorite, not by the shock waves of it, but actual by the the rock, is uh, in 1954 when Anne Hodges was struck in the hip while taking a nap on her couch. It 
blasted through the roof and it hit her in the hip. Um, the closest thing I've ever seen was it, it was actually a Central Texas news story. A dude owned a bunch of farmland and was saying, so anyway, I did a patrol and counted all my cows, then went home. Next day went out and this was there. And, and what you saw looked like a collapsed rusted giant milk canister and he goes uh he's like uh you know we're far enough out ain't nobody come ain't nobody go only one place it could have come from and then he like conspicuously points up at the stars and then uh and i'm just like okay crazy person thinks you know junk fell out of the sky and then uh the news report ended with uh i think it was kxan or, or kvue one of the local affiliates saying yeah so we called nasa and they said yep that's the second stage of a satellite we just sent up <laughs> and just ah! straight up landed in his cow pasture whoa uh funny story googling that actually did find a meteor that hit a cow a live cow in venezuela no way in 1972 identified as a meteorite uh, so I bet go. I bet that was delicious. <laughs> I bet it probably did taste pretty oh, good. Get yeah. a good sear on it. <laughs> exactly. You know, you're just cutting into that fine steak. You put it into your mouth, and you can just hear it. Beep up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now with the new digitized records from, I believe, the Ottoman Empire. Someone might have to correct me on that. We believe we may have found our first instance, our first noticed instance of a lethal meteorite victim. Uh, in what we now call Suleymaniya in Iraq, Turkish records indicate that in 1888, a large fireball was visible in the sky around 8.30 p.m. After that spotting, meteorites rained from the sky, resulting in uh, the death of an unnamed man, the paralytic injury of an unnamed man, and loss of crops. While scientists don't have the rock to confirm its origin, they believe that the sourcing of the documents give it legitimacy. Quote, due to the fact that these documents are from official government sources and written by local authorities, even Grand Vizier himself as well, we do not have any suspicion of their reality. Uh, because there are still many more documents to be digitized and many digitized documents that they have not fully examined yet, uh, they believe there may even be more to this paper trail to back it up or to give it some legitimacy. You know who the hero of the story is, is that dude that was paralyzed. Because if it was two people killed, we wouldn't be hearing about this. But no. someone gets paralyzed by a space rock for years. Uncle Gary is telling about it. And I've That's... seen that green fire come down from the sky and knock me right in the leg. That's why I can't work. It was this big. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> oh, my. Imagine if you actually got paralyzed by a meteor and nobody wants to hear the story. And everyone's just like, whatever. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> We get Shut it. Up. God's wrath. Yes. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Fire in the sky. Now you're paralyzed. We should go to church. I get it. <laughs> uh, but it, here, There's another like interesting subtext to this story from, from Science Alert. The find is an interesting one because it points to a large gap in our knowledge, the researchers point out. It's not just that the historical record is vast, but it's also understudied, and there's a lack of work on historical documents in languages other than English. Man, all of this stuff basically boils down to... This stuff is very tedious, and humans have better things to do with their time. This is all going to change just in the next 10 years with the AIs crawling through all that stuff, finding patterns and, and you know, taking all these disparate threads of, you know, like, uh, let's say some crazy rainbow meteor hit, um, but only one in 100,000 people reported on it. Uh, but it was a global event that caused a rainbow to go all around the world, then then it's going to take an AI and not a human to piece together, look at this story, look at that story, look at that other story. But mm -hmm. on the flip side, that means conspiracy theorists, you could just say, tell me a story, make me believe blank. And then robots will be able to go out and find all enough pieces to be like, oh, shoot, I guess that beard length does affect gold prices. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is very interesting. And yeah, apparently part of the difficulty with this is that uh, it was in Ottoman Turkish, which is rather difficult to translate. And I don't know if it's still in, in, in use anymore. So, you know, that's that's part of it is like as AI is able to, you know, do uh, what is it? O O E R O I R O optical optical care. O C R O C R. Yeah. O -C -R. Yeah. Optical character recognition. Uh, you know, as that gets better in our understanding of 
uh, not just current language, but, you know, ancient languages go you, like that's just a matter of time. Well, and on top of that, there was recycling of paper. I remember, man, oh. seeing some story years ago where it's like like once a page had faded enough, like there was a copy of the Bible that had faded enough that somebody was like, well, this looks like I could write down my grocery shopping on it. <laughs> and so they had, to, <laughs> they had to figure out like what the faded underneath part was. Wow. Uh, there we go. Uh, I got one last story for you guys. Uh, okay. Story. We're gonna we're gonna listen to uh, to a little bit of a clip here. I wanted. To... I swear to God, I want nothing more than for it to be Gary talking about like I sent yeah. this green meteor down. I was able to cripple one of them. The other one died. <laughs> You're still talking about it. Gary. Anyway. S- Gary sucks so bad. <laughs> Gary does seem like he sucks. God, hey man, Gary he's not sucks. a dying white dwarf. He's just a white dwarf. We all die eventually. It's me, Gary. I'm very oh, high right now. God, Gary. High ass Gary. Ugh. He's playing Ruining his. It. Always oh, playing his space rock really loud yeah. and his oh, Chevy. Oh God, <laughs> that that stuff sucks too. <laughs> no good. Uh, g- give me the classics. Give me give me classic space rock. Oh uh, God, yeah, you know like. <laughs> beep, boop, boop, beep. <laughs> My lighter out. Sounds of science. Those are jams. Remember, yeah. remember when Simon and Garfunkel wrote that song, "The Sounds oh, of Science." Dude, uh, yeah. Poo, 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 poo. <laughs> do you uh, do you remember uh, when George Bush did this song? Yo, shorty, it's your birthday. We done party <laughs> like it's your birthday, and we yeah. can sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give a fuck. It's not your birthday. You can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. Look, mommy, I got the X if you into taking drugs. I'm into having sex. I ain't into making love. So, uh, you, we all remember that classic, right? <laughs> I do. I do. That's, That's a was, banger. Yeah. Uh, that was what he was reading the children when 9-11 happened. <laughs> a lot of yeah, people don't know that. that. Was, yeah. B- that, uh, uh, lost to history. But that was, <laughs> that was the My Pet Goat book was actually the original thing that 50 used for in the club later. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, if I were to guess where this is headed, uh, this is well, more of that uh, deep fake stuff. I mean, we're just going back. We're just going down the music. Ah, the music. Yeah, hall. this History. is just you know in 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 the odds. I think if if this is going to end where I think it's going to end, it is it is intensely remarkable. Well, there is also like I like big butts, and I cannot lie. <laughs> you other brothers can deny that when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get strong. What a pull up tough that she noticed it, but was stuffed. Deep in the jeans she's wearing. I'm hoping Of course, I can't the classic, the classic yeah. President Bill Clinton. Baby yeah, got no, no, back. no. That 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 was what he said after the Oklahoma City bombing. I remember yes, that. Exactly. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. He wanted a moment of healing to bring us all together, much like Same. America's butt cheeks. That's what they called it. They're like, yeah. let us be America's butt cheeks and come together. I mean, of course, in this moment, yeah. liberal media never reported it. <laughs> And you know, like there are other, you know, we've just uncovered some new, some new, like some old Frank Sinatra, right? You can dance, you can just have the time of your life. Oh, see that girl, what's that scene? Dig in the dancing queen. <laughs> You know, just Riding science is great. No, this is a, this is a YouTube channel called uh, Vocal Synthesis. And they have created all of these models on uh, tons of different uh, public figures and, and speakers. A lot of the presidents, uh, most recently, they, they got into a little bit of thing with Rock Nation because they've got some Jay-Z ones on here. And, yeah, uh, that's that's the one that... Uh, uh, so, Brian, are you familiar with uh, the Navy SEAL copy pasta? Mm, is that the one on Reddit where people are talking about how badass or you no? Know, let me tell you what a badass yeah, I am. Yeah, I'll have you know that I graduated yeah. top of my class in the Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on Al Qaeda. I have over 300 confirmed kills, mm-hmm. and I'm trained in guerrilla warfare. Well, uh, what you might not remember is that uh, apparently was a, a real big hit for 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 Jay-Z. Yeah, like, uh, what the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs and I've been involved in number of right, secret no, Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. There's somebody put a beat to this and it actually slaps. Uh, uh, Google it. It's on SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. But somebody put a beat to, to this and it actually like because when it echoes, it, you can you can hear the artifacting of the the 
you know, software or whatever. Yeah. Like there's just you like can, that. You can hint. see the, the, the flangey edges of it. But like, if it sounds like it does when the beats under it, like you're just downloading a Jay-Z song off Grokster in 2004, uh, there is, there is a reality that comes uh, uh, with, with this particular copy pasta. If price is able to find it. Let me see. Is this one? What the fuck did you just the, fucking there we say go. about me, you little bitch? I love you know I graduated top of my class Whack. in the Navy SEALs And I've been involved in number of secret raids on all Quaida And I have over 300 confirmed kills I'm training guerrilla warfare And I'm the top slapper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces you are nothing to me but just another target. I would wipe you the fuck up with precision and likes it, which has never been seen before on this earth. Mark my fucking world. You think you can get away with saying that shit to me over the internet? Think again, fuck up. As we speak on I 100% would believe, like, like, outside of the beginning of it or whatever, if you just mm -hmm. gave me a snippet of the middle, would 100% have believed this to be real. Yeah, um, it's 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 very cool. Um, but yeah, apparently so. The, apparently they had done two more Jay Z ones. This vocal synthesis uh, YouTube channel did that. I guess got pulled down by Rock Nation. Uh, ah, really? It was uh, actually we we do have a mirror of one of them. Uh, they had Jay Z covering. Uh, uh, well, let's let's see if we can just load it up and just maybe just play it here. Pacific weather windshield to the Maggio to McCarthy, Richard Nixon, Studer, back at television, no Corey, South Corey, Marilyn Monroe, Rosenberg's H Bone, Sugar Ray, Pen Majom, Brando, the King and I, and the Catcher in the Rye, Eisenhower, Vaccine and Lens, got a new queen, Marshall, Lever Achi, Santana, go by. We didn't start the fire. It was oh always burning since the world's been turning. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. <laughs> no, we didn't like it, but we tried to fight it. Joseph Stalin, Malenka, Vanessa, Ren, Proctor, so cool. Fee, Rocky, Fella, That's Kent. amazing. <laughs> this one got taken down by, it, by, by which entity? By the Jay-Z side. That one and... So and that's, that's, but, but in that that's case... That's fascinating. Like, do, do they own the sound of his voice? How, how would one protect that? No. And how, how did it, one... If anything, Billy Joel's people would yeah, have right? songwriting uh, chops, though. Is it being published as a song? We're not... Not exactly I mean, sure. And, and not only that, it's like, who's making money on it? What money well, are you shutting then, down? But then the question becomes, and this is where we have legal, you know, legal casework to be built, is do you own the vocals that it was modeled after? Because it was certainly modeled after Jay-Z songs, right. right? Like, are you reproducing? Like, is that a sufficient synthesis uh, uh, so yeah, it's, so, it's crazy. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't believe it got pulled down. Uh, yes, it is. Well, and keep in mind a uh, pull down on, uh, what was it? YouTube or what? On YouTube. What, what, yeah. Okay. So, so like can uh, be many things. Yeah. YouTube stuff is pretty easy to pull down. All you have to do yeah. is threaten to maybe think about calling a lawyer and then people yeah. usually pull stuff down. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but from a legal framework, I don't think they have a leg to stand on. I think that that is a standalone piece of art. It's the equivalent of drawing an oil painting of Jay Z, you know, uh, 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 holding up Building Five uh, or Building Seven, whatever. You know, yeah, Building nine, Five. <laughs> I don't, I don't know which ones they are. Um, um, but, 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 but it, it makes an interesting point, right? Because it's not them. Because we, we, we know there's a lot of like, hey, we have this machine learning that can make stuff sound like other songs it can you know make instruments and sound like another song but this is using uh someone's vocal data to recite an already existing published song right and is there possibly fraud in that in well deception so here's here's what don't you own the right to your own voice to some degree Should culturally um, I, I was really surprised uh, by a, a, fr a friend of our friends, um, uh, the uh, and, uh, rabbit hole. Never mind. Sure. Uh, uh, like I, I don't know where that line of parody ends, and uh, like like is a deep fake parody or is it legal? Because if you're gonna say, uh, uh, Bernie Burns over at Rooster Teeth recently said. Uh, deep fakes are not parody and they're not protected and they should not be protected. Um, but then I'm like, well, by that logic, is that how we feel about Photoshop? So all Photoshops are not protected. Well, uh, and then, and then what happens when, all right, let's say 
that like, okay, you can't train it on a hundred percent of somebody's voice or face or video or something. But then you're like, all right, well then what is the legal limit? Can I train it on enough legally allowed Jay-Z as long as there's other people who are doing a Jay-Z impression mm. that still gets me to the point where I can now produce this voice? Like, uh, and, uh, and the very little bit of uh, my understanding is from the very little bit of legal precedent that there is out there about this today, you are allowed to use that. You're allowed to use copyright in, copyrighted material to train uh, to, to train the machine learning. Um, but as far as publishing, you know, and how you present it, right? I, I think yeah. if it didn't say Jay Z sings Billy Joel's "We Start the We Started the Start," whatever the song is called, uh, yeah, it 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 might be a different thing if you could say, "Oh, this is not Jay Z. This is KP." I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I wonder. I wonder if that's like because the the interest here is though this sounds like Jay Z, and it's like oh, when you put a beat on it. It really sounds like, you know, a, a weird Jay-Z song that just happens to be this Reddit meme. Yeah. Uh, so if if the issue is it's getting pulled down because it says Jay-Z, then how long before we come up with the the veil that can rest in front of it? Because people really just kind of want to hear something that sounds like Jay-Z. I mean, this is also where Twitter is ahead of its time by even having the verified tag. The verified tag has always seemed kind of like a joke, like a status symbol or whatever. But then all of a sudden it matters in a world where bots can, you know, uh, synthesize tweets that sound like various people. And we have bots and they're welcome to play in the Twitter ecosystem. Uh, then all of a sudden it makes me, you know, wonder and want, you know, for YouTube verification, which I, I, they already have. And then, you know, even SoundCloud verification or or even just file by file authentication saying. Well, I, I do think that right now we're not in a position, although I'm sure that for the Jay-Z's of the world, uh, they they want to scout out this legal ground. Uh, but we're not really nobody really thinks that that's Jay-Z reading the copy pasta thing. Even if we know that it sounds close, no, I mean, well, I know, maybe for, 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 for the record, had you not primed me by reminding me that that's what he's doing uh, and you only gave me a random 30 second chunk of that hmm. totally would have believed it would have had no reason not to believe it because I wouldn't have recognized it as the copy pasta. Well, yeah, but that I mean, so so. Uh, if that's the case, then it's more, you know, not being aware of, of what it is. And I guess you could, you know, create fake Jay-Z songs. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, look, it's, it's, a, it's a brave new world out there. Yeah, it'll be interesting. This, this channel does a lot with presidential recordings because there are a lot, there's a lot of clean recordings yeah. of presidents speaking, including uh, this clip of FDR. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? <laughs> what? What country are you from? What? what? What ain't no country I ain't ever heard of. They speak English in what? <laughs> English motherfucker. Do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. All right. And by, by the way, this is all before. Is it getting increasingly weird that Adobe had a big old press release for their technology? And then like every second that goes by with them refusing to talk about it or indicate that it's out there or released or whatever, it gets more suspicious. Like, like why is that professional grade product that has real value to a lot of media creators of all stripes, not out yet. And, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if like in Photoshop there, there are hidden things in Photoshop in terms of like counterfeiting. Like when Photoshop detects that you have scanned an image of a, of a dollar bill, it yep. says, hey bro, you gotta stop that right now. I'm not letting you go any further. And I, I imagine there's some element of that where they only want certain people to have it because from hearing some of our friends talk, uh, some people have Adobe Voco. Um, very tight, a very tight circle of people who have it. Um, and and so I guess maybe it's just like we have to really control this because there are already people out there making this on their own and people are going to look to us, Adobe, for the standard of how to handle synthesizing fake voices. So so you you you, you want to build in enough guardrails so you don't become the 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 
people that the lawyers come to. They, right. They, like, they're building in fingerprinting for authenticity uh, right. at a very core level. Right. And, because, and that takes time. Because like with images, you know, it, with JPEGs and PNGs and stuff, you can in, you can embed copyright information to it. MP3s, you know, ID3 tags can do can do that. But if you're a professional, if you're working with high quality audio, like wave file, like wave files are very tough to put. Uh, I my understanding is but, they're but, but not as, all, as we've much seen with data. like on YouTube, the digital copyright fingerprinting is qu quite good, and so it may be that that maybe. Behind the scenes, you know, there somebody's received word that it's like, "Hey, uh, we're not where we need to be as far as fingerprinting authenticity on stuff. Could you just delay for a bit, or or?" Yeah, I I totally believe that too. You know, because those those systems are not built into every website. You know, uh, and they don't they all work through different vendors. They're not all the same thing. What and that, we, we, what YouTube uses is different than what SoundCloud, than Twitch, than Facebook. You know, they're all different. Uh, different libraries that they check against. That is a fairly fundamental question is, do I own my identity? Do I own myself, my likeness, who I am or whatever? And and we've seen cases uh, legally where people have signed that over and then didn't like what was done with it. But, mm -hmm. but inherently, if I don't ever sign anything over to anyone, do I still own my voice, my cadence, my even my personality? Because at some point there's going to be AI bots that are able to reduce any... 30 to 80 seconds of audio uh, to, okay, you hit these emotional beats, you had this cadence, you covered this topic, but with this spin on it, yeah, we got you, we got your number. We can, we can mm -hmm. hit a button and have a Brian Brushwood hot take. And where does, say, copyrighted content, like, we, you know, we create stuff, well, copyright will expire, the, theoretically copyright will expire, or you have Creative Commons and stuff. Uh, how does... You know, it's it's kind of a take on remix culture, and we haven't. There's only so much progress that's been made in that avenue. Now suddenly, you are synthesizing new information from existing published content, not just remixing it and transforming it. So it, it'll be it'll be a very interesting time indeed. You guys want to do true? Do, you want to do some picks? Let's pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Uh, Justin, Brian? yeah. Have you listened to the Duncan Trussell? Netflix thing, Midnight Gospel. No. I have very mixed up, complicated feelings about it. Number one, I've decided that that number. First and foremost, I can't stop. I can't stop. I'm going to keep going through the whole thing. Second of all, I have absolutely no stomach for it. And when I wow. say that, I know people are thinking, you know, there's boobs and bursting out guts and all that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. What I don't have a stomach for is the sophomore college 4 a.m. stoned hippie talk. It's so difficult because it's, it's well, here, lay out, lay out, lay out the, the, the premise for people who are unfamiliar with it. Cause, cause it is a unique show. Right. So uh, what they've done is, is he's been doing podcasting for a very long time. And, and, and he's one of my favorite guests when he would show up on Harmontown. Uh, he's the guy that got Dan Harmon to start Harmontown as a podcast. Um, uh, am I right in remembering like he went through a cancer journey and, and things look pretty grim at one point? Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, along this way, he's been doing this podcast. He talks to a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, gurus of various variety. Uh, the very first episode of this uh, has Dr. Drew Pinsky on there. But apparently, like, giant chunks of the actual audio that you're hearing are these uh, mind-blowing conversations. And I say that without hesitation because very clearly, Duncan Trussell, who I like very much, is very sincerely having his mind blown in these moments. Um, yeah. But it's coupled with visuals from Pendleton Ward, the guy who did Adventure Time, uh, and uh, they're, they're, it's often telling a totally opposite, surreal thing. There's you know, like a very visual story happening parallel to the conversation, which yeah, may be very in, different. In, yeah. in, in the vein of like heavy metal from the early 1980s, that, that animated movie or whatever. Like in that first episode with Dr. Drew, their conversation is about uh, the drug, drug crisis policy. and good yeah. and bad drugs. But meanwhile, the story is uh, uh, the character and the president in this simulated world are in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and they're fighting their way through the White House and across the country. And so these the conversation reference, you know, makes like exclaims about the story sometimes, but the story is kind of its own thing happening. 
Yeah, and it's sort of like a you could see sort of a, a original content build up structure where you could tell they went back and got the people to say like, hey, just say these five wild lines and mm-hmm. we'll be able to make this. Whoa, work. a zombie! Yeah, exactly. Not and then uh, uh, and then and then after that, it's you know the uh, so suddenly tonally it shifts into this deep metaphysical conversation or whatever. Um, I I will watch all of this, and part of me will love all of this. Also, part of me will hate all of this because like uh, what was it episode two? He's talking to a dude from Arkansas who got out of jail and is explaining why magic, uh, ritual magic, ritual magic is better than the Eastern religions because the Eastern religions are designed to help you achieve uh, nirvana in 20 to 30 generations of life and reincarnation whereas ritual magic is yeah and and it's interesting that you that you read it as him saying it's better because my recollection of that conversation was that he said that clicked better with him or that that's that I don't know. That style of sure. teaching worked better. For Either him. way, we're talking about a lot of hippie stuff. Ding, like it's just, ding, ding, it is, ding. yeah, it is. And and either like you're going to have, either you are in the frequency to receive that, and you're like, ah, like metaphysical conversations. Uh, uh, that that I think the name is apt. You know, that midnight gospel of of you and a bunch of friends having the conversations that are so far beyond the normal. How was your day? You know, uh, kind of stuff, but. If you're not in the mood to receive that, then you're just like, oh, my God, it's just random words that periodically people are going to say, wow. I, I, that's the part that is so bizarre to me is I can't stop watching. Like, I, I, I can't tell. I know that if I read these words in a book devoid of all the context of this show, uh, they would enrage, en- enrage me, and I would throw the book away. But really, but but well, but I mean, just because look, there's a lot of dumb, overly simplistic stuff in there. But I really like every single person who appears on it. I really like the authenticity of the conversation. I really like the hyper surrealistic visuals. I really like the art style. Like I love every single piece of this thing, and I can't understand why I'm just. Uh, I, I I will not be able to stop. It's uh, it's it's a bit like where we were at with uh, the new pope, where it's like we had this big come to come to the pope moment, where we were trying to decide <laughs> if we were going to keep <laughs> keep watching, and all of us held it as a secret that we'll watch all of these, even though they make no sense and they're frustrating and they annoy us, <laughs> you know. Ah, interesting. Uh, but they're also beautiful and and transcendental or whatever. So uh, that's how I feel about it. So had, quali- so you you did say that you you listened to his podcast. Had you listened to any of the podcasts that were used? I for listened this to his appearance on other podcasts. Oh, and he always played the far out there wild card, like just next level. You'd swear. That 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 he was high on seventy five different things at the same time, but he was so good at just taking a thread and running sideways. It was fascinating, and and he was always one of my favorite people to show up on Harmontown. So um, to hear him be the linchpin, it it makes sense that this feels to me like an unguided starship, <laughs> kind of just going wherever it's going to go. You know, I, uh, I I I don't have quite the same reaction to i guess the content of those conversations as you did though the one thing i think that is really tough for the show to uh to express especially if you were watching it and you know if, if you have an understanding oh these are actually just from like a podcast like if you don't know the name of someone yes then yes. you're you're very it's very much like well i actually don't know how much authority to give you i would like to give you some because you know, I, I enjoy hearing your experiences and, and talking about, uh, you know, how you relate to death or drugs or m- ritual it, magic or whatever. It, and so it's very tough to be like, well, I don't know the name. And I don't know where they're coming from. And even sometimes when they're talking about real world stuff, it's like, and I opened the center, like, I don't really know what type of center you opened. And so that makes it a little frustrating it, because it, they've cut down these podcasts from however long to part part of a 20 to 30 minute animation it turns out that the part of a podcast that you think is the most boring the part where they say this is my friend so-and-so we met because of this they're important because of x y and z you're like get to the good part already right 
absent that, it's like now I am given the homework of pressing pause, going to IMDb, looking at how crappy their layout is of everything, trying to track it down, realizing that the best way to find out who's he even talking to is to press pause on Netflix and wait seven seconds for it to go to the grayed out thing where you can actually see the verbal summary of the episode and it might mention mm -hmm. who the guest is. Now I can look up their Wikipedia page. It it. I, sure. I, I really, really agree. Like, and, like, and I, even that surprising. process, even that process gets annoying because like the, the ritual magic guy, you try to, you try to look him up. And the first thing that comes up is like this murder can, you know, supposedly, uh, 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 allegedly, uh, allegedly per, uh, done by teenagers in the nineties. You go, wow, well, why is this the first thing to pop up? And you realize that's pro that is probably the same guy. He doesn't have a very big web presence. And he talks about being in jail, and in the, in the, it's just there. It, it that that gets kind of tough, but I, I really think it's it's great. And having gone into the first few episodes not knowing that format was like really cool because it it almost feels like uh, a, a, an Adult Swim, older Adult Swim type of show where it's like very limited animation budget yeah. and it's very focused on a dense conversation, you know, like sixteen ounce mouse or or home movies or something, which is not necessarily adult one but very conversation focused very or even scribbly or what, what was that super scribbly one like even scribblier than squid billies or whatever um uh, home movies was in scribble vision yeah and then there yeah, was home movie yeah critic home movies and and, and well like uh, a, like a tim and eric no 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 uh, the had dr that one. cats dr, dr. Cats. cats right but i mean yeah. like j just lo-fi like, like oh, tim sure. and eric that was pretty much just a a, a a low resolution shoot that they just ran a Photoshop filter on. Yeah, and they called it animation. <laughs> um, and so it felt a lot like that, very dense, very conversation heavy. Um, but it's paired with these really, with you know, very colorful, very bright, very imaginative visual stories. And I think it's very cool how they get how they tell the visual stories without really getting much help from the dialogue. So uh, I, I certainly think it's worth worth checking out. Um, I, I will co-sign your pick, Brian. Cool. Justin, you got a pick? So in a world before social media, there was a phenomenon that your friends would go on vacation and then they would come back and they would want to show you all the pictures that they took. I just realized and what this this was <laughs> bittersweet. Because on one oh. hand, you're excited that your friends got to see some cool things. On the other hand, looking at pictures and videos of other people having fun is only so interesting. And lo, we have the Beastie Boys story on Apple Plus or Apple TV. Um, it's a must watch if you're a Beastie Boys fan. Uh, it is, among other things, a loving tribute to uh, the the uh, now departed third member of the Beastie Boys, MCA, Adam Yauch. Um, and at times, it really is a credible uh, uh, presentation of what I'm sure was an amazing night in Brooklyn when uh, they put on this show uh, with Mike Diamond, Adam Horowitz, and uh, Spike Jones is kind of this like voice narrating things in 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 the background sometimes uh but boy do you just kind of want a five-part beastie boys documentary series in, in a world where we have making a murderer and tiger king and oj and the jordan doc you're like man there are there are times that like you know when when they go through their separation with def jam and they talk about what their relationship with uh Russell Simmons. Uh no, 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 no. The white one, uh, <laughs> whose name I'm forgetting. Uh, Russell Simmonson. No. Um, Russell Simmons. Oh my god. No, the one that it, uh Russell Simmons Dean. Anyway, I I actually should be thrown in jail uh <laughs> for not remembering this. Because he's the gigantic wrestling fan. They actually talk a lot about wrestling. Sugar Knight? Uh, in, no. No! God damn it. Anyway. <laughs> Vanilla uh, I'm going to kill. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually die uh, <laughs> from not remembering this. I'm physically, I'm physically dying right now. I had that uh, recently when I couldn't access the name Jeff McBride. The magician who was there the day I asked Bonnie to marry me. 
I couldn't access. Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. Rick, Rick Rubin. Rubin. Okay. There you go. Uh, so they talk about how close they were with Rick Rubin and, and how Rick Rubin was an, an indispensable part of their career. And that's great, right? And then they kind of fade apart and there's not a ton there. They go from Russell Simmons being somebody that believed a lot in them to them very much believing that they were basically like a version of Menudo for him. He just really needed white rappers because he needed to get people on the radio. Um, and so uh, it, it, it shows you the benefits and the drawbacks of having you tell your own story. Uh, and, and ultimately there is, there is just like, it's only a, like an hour and 50 minutes and, uh, they spend the vast majority of it, uh, before, you know, uh, uh certainly, but before, uh, sabotage, let's, let's, you know, use that as like the, the line of demarcation. So they kind of just race through like. Uh, they race through hello nasty they race they don't they don't even mention you know any of the latter stuff the 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 yeah the or the, the two of the five burrows uh you know uh the the album the instrumental album that they put out um it, it pretty much after hello nasty you're like 20 minutes away from the end of the documentary uh and they're such a sonically interesting band that like I don't know whether or not they didn't want a music nerd out uh, during the live show or that wasn't as compelling, but like, man, would I love a longer form version of this where they went like way into the samples and way into where they were at the time. Um, it, it is, it, it's a must see if you're a Beastie Boys fan, but boy, do they still need the like, big multi-part documentary treatment in my yeah. opinion well, that's a shame especially for like kind of a long length feature right it's almost two hours and feeling like it doesn't cover everything well enough i made it about 12 minutes in and for reasons i won't go into on this podcast i got frustrated uh but uh but 12 minutes in i think they had gotten as far as the question of who's your favorite beastie boy <laughs> which yeah which was we're 12 minutes in and we're still on this huh all right well i mean you know there's there's good stuff there but also it's like i think it's hard there's there's a lot of time spent on how they felt about license to ill um which they don't mention the original name of license to ill oh, which wait. is something that would be that should be confronted in a more documentary sense uh but is that the one they, with the n word about... was there like an n word in there was no that... the f the f slur oh, don't okay. don't be an f slur oh, that's right was that's the original was. name wow. of license to ill uh and part of it was they they go into the idea that uh they wanted to be wrestling bad guys and rick rubin is still a massive wrestling fan and you watch these early MTV hits and these early Def Jam commercials and it's Rick Rubin being a wrestling character. Uh, so there is credibility to that. And uh, the, the idea that very much they felt that they were making fun of frat guys and then frat guys started showing up and then they started headlining Madison square garden. And then they realized they didn't want to be that anymore. And that's a great story, but I kind of feel like you are unable to really tell the larger story of why they matter artistically why they matter pop culture and why it mattered the most whether or not they were in the center of it they were in the eye of the storm but like the fact that the beastie boys as that band then became this supersonically interesting band that was so much more diverse and important than that initial pull and yet they were still retaining certain elements of that while rejecting the vast majority of it is like, I don't think that can be told from the inside out. Yeah. Like that's a part of the story, but it part of it has to be told from the outside in. And uh, uh, it's again, it's a must watch boy. Is it a loving tribute to MCA and how important he was in the band? Uh, but because he's not there, like, 
boy, would it have really benefited from an interview with Rick Rubin, from an interview with Russell Simmons, from an interview with Run DMC. Like, you know, there's, I just hope that while all these people are still here, you know, obviously MCA, at least he was interviewed a lot. Um, you know, there, that, that would be interesting. Although I will say that there are some great little touches. Like they totally keep kayfabe on Nathaniel Hornblower uh, throughout the entire show. Oh, of uh, him the being the director? Of, yeah, that it's MCA's uncle. And, you know, they, you know, they, there's winks in like, yeah, this is what we had to deal with. And it's very clearly MCA in a, in a crazy, you know, mustache and wig. Uh, but they never break kayfabe on like, oh, that this was a way. Like they they insinuate that the new label capital was like, hey, we need to put you with adults, and you don't really know whether or not this was them saying, oh no, yeah, we have an adult, like MCA's <laughs> uncle's uh, director, or if it was uh, them there, just doing a the thing. <laughs> there was a friend of mine who uh, had a. Cartoon Network pilot. Uh, I think I can navigate this. Uh, Nar uh, Cartoon Network pilot. It was, was going to be the first live action, like, um, grown up person inter uh, introducing cartoons for kids that, that we hadn't yeah. seen that in a while. Uh, and uh, another friend of mine, uh, <laughs> they were like, wait a minute. Uh, they're like, well, we need, we need to get this guy a nutritionist cause he needs to slim down for the, for the production and we're on track and we got a thing. He's like, nutritionist, what do they make? <laughs> and then they're like, well, they make this much money. He's like, great. I'm his nutritionist. And so, and so there was no guidance, no whatever. And so like the ongoing joke as he grabbed, you know, another chocolate bar was like a, is this okay with you? And you're like, yes, it is. That's your nutritionist. It's fine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, so, uh, uh, I would encourage you to watch it, Brian. I understand that you had some platform problems, but I mean, I've already uh, paid for it. Might as well, <laughs> might as well look yeah. at it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it is something where if you want the definitive, if you want the definitive Beastie Boys documentary, which I think I was secretly hoping for, you, you will get. A, a couple really, really good friends who went on a crazy vacation showing you all the pictures and videos and if, you'll, if anything, you'll, you'll enjoy it. If anything, it sort of hints to me that that's got to be incoming. There's no way this doesn't become an amazing five-part series down the road. I, I certainly hope so. I mean, I, I, I think that there's just, and part of it is just because they are uh, obviously an important band to me, but there's so much there, you know, that is just kind of glossed over. And uh, specifically as much as, you know, the world has changed in terms of um, race representation, Me Too stuff, like they were really <laughs> they on the forefront there. appeared on stage jumping around with giant three and a half foot dongs. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah, no, and that's 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 a focus. Like that is that is the you know, they they talk about how much they hated the end of that tour, and part of it was like let's just get to the point where the dick pops out, so we can get off stage. Like that that was that was it. It became so mechanical. They were so burnt out. They hated their crowds. They hated their songs. Wow. And and that was they just needed to get get away. But also, it's like, uh, you know, ah, geez, there's there's so much that that you want to uh, that you want to see more of, and and uh, boy, they did a lot of drugs. There's definitely <laughs> a lot of weed smoking with the Beastie Boys. In fact, that seems to be the biggest change is that they stopped drinking as much and started smoking more weed. That's really the the, the difference in their sound. Uh, I got a pick. What you got? Go. Uh, over the past couple of days, I was I was inspired by uh, another podcast that I listened to to give this a shot. I had never seen it. Uh, it's very obviously very highly rated, uh, and now I'm about three or four episodes into the HBO crime drama The Sopranos. Oh, <laughs> a little show you might have you heard might of. Might know The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is really really cool. I uh, I I wasn't sure going into it how. Uh, I guess how dated it would feel or how 
like like one of the things of, of if you go back to something very influential uh much later down the line that you kind of never had exposure to uh it it itself feels like a ripoff of some of the ideas that it originates or permeates through culture since it came out you know i had that uh <laughs> as, growing up i watched scrubs a lot because they had scrubs on comedy central every night and so i'd watched a lot of yeah. that and then at one point as an, as an adult someone asked me to watch um uh, Grey's Anatomy, and and I go, oh, I know what's gonna happen. The the kid's gonna die, and he's gonna get sad, or something. like like all these yeah. very obvious medical drama tropes. That uh, that was but my, my thought experience was like, with uh, uh, trying to watch The Godfather after growing up with every parody of The Godfather, everything ever. Yes. You know, it's just like we tried to watch it. Like, are they serious with all this? this n- none of this is a joke, right? right. And uh, ends up not being a, a much of a thing with the Sopranos. There's there's a little bit of it where you're like, oh, they're kind of doing the, you know, the Italian mob guy bit, but that that it's not ironic. They are that's them doing it in 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 serious, uh, 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 you know, unironic earnestness. Uh, and I think it holds up. Like I think it's a very awesome, you know, serialized drama for the time. And, and, well, there and- was that meta element. I think is it the first scene of the of the series that uh, one of them's doing the the every time that I think that I'm out, they pull me back in thing from The Godfather. Like he's like like it establishes that mm-hmm. this is a mob story Post. told in a world where mob stories and movies have all existed. And even right. though half these actors have been in those other movies, now they're playing different characters. And uh, who, who are just aware know. of the reputation and of the tropes, right? Because yeah. they all have watched The Godfather forever. Like they would probably love this show. The characters in The Sopranos <laughs> would love The Sopranos. Well, and, and if I'm yeah. not mistaken, I believe I believe The Godfather had the effect of sort of codifying the the fictionalized version of the mob that appeared in The Godfather wasn't truly a thing until The Godfather came out. At which point, Everyone all of the people be. in that circuit were like. I don't know. It looks pretty badass to me. Let me just act that way and lean into it. Yeah. And they even reference like Scarface. There's a point where it's like, we got to yeah. go Scarface on these guys and the big, the big guns. And I was like, it, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting to see it as, I guess, um, a modern take on uh, a, a modern for the time take on a mob, a mob story, right? Like you've got this guy who is trying to be, trying to be the leader, uh, but is like, going to therapy and having anxiety attacks and his reticence about going to therapy and being seen at therapy and taking Prozac and, and he's got kids and uh, you know, his, his kids are growing up and what if they leave? And he's, you know, I, I think it's, it's a very um, a surprisingly emotional tale where I don't think you would have seen that in say mob stories of the past or previous to it. So uh, uh, what, uh, what, what, what episode are you on? I think I'm only on episode three or four. Okay. Uh, the f- uh, the episode college. It might either be your next episode That's or the one, one after that. That's my next. Okay. One. That's really that was considered to be, and I think I'm curious your take. But that is that was the first time that it just like stunted on everybody. That it's like, oh wait, this show is actually like great. This is actually like awesome so I'm, I'm 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 excited for you to get to it nice yeah i did hear that there was an episode like that pretty early on in the first season so uh i'm looking yeah. forward to that uh and uh the sopranos you can watch it on hbo now right now if you don't have a subscription you just have to have the app um i think it's on the hbo apps and yeah the it's free apps, and by the way uh, 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 uh the way that all these governors are starting to open stuff up we you gotta wonder when hbo is gonna close that loophole down so uh yeah. go does, watch it, it does kind of feel like like everybody is starting to you know we've we've had a, a couple months of a held breath and it does start to feel like people are going <sighs> just maybe starting yeah. to breathe again yeah yeah we'll see so uh the sopranos on uh, hbo well, Brian, Justin, as we always do the show, thank you so much for joining me here as we talked about science. And we'll wrap it up as we always do. Hooray for weird things. Hooray, weird things. Hooray for weird things. Beep, pop, boop, pop, boop, pop, beep. Space rock, damn it, Gary. <laughs> hey, that's the show. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's going to be so mad when he comes back and finds out that we like, changed the slogan to hooray for yep. weird things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's um, what he gets for 
his oh career my God. as a so, writer. Uh, uh, Merrill Barr brings up, uh, like Texas is, uh, I believe, uh, number 42 in uh, number of infections per million people. So we're, we're, we're very, very uh, uh, not COVID-y. Um, but then somebody, I was listening to uh, freaking, what an NPR thing to say. Somebody on NPR was just like, uh, 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 like, well, you know, I just don't know that the demand to go to bars and restaurants is that great. And I, I mean, that's going like, to be a... We definitely did a whole hour on just fantasizing on how great it will be go, to go back to a bar or a restaurant. I mean, there's a long conversation there. But I don't know. I, I think... I know. <laughs> it, it was it was about an hour, and it was on happy hour on Friday. <laughs> and it was mainly about how bad we wanted to go to a bar just and a restaurant. salivating over what, what we would do, what we would order and the, the, the next time we get to go to a bar or a restaurant. <laughs> Uh, well, if you guys need to take a break, let's, uh, let's yeah, do that now. We uh, could do a I'm shorter after this. Meds. I'll be right back. All right. <clears throat> um, yeah, wait. Oh, so wait. We're, we're going to do after things? We'll just do a little brief uh, brief one here. All right. And then uh, just uh, so we got something for the people. You know, we had we had a, a very short episode of Weird Things last week. Um, so I'll kind of make it up for the folks. Make sure we get uh, to Yeah, that was a pretty long episode, though, right? Uh no, this one was great. This one was like yeah. an hour twenty or something. <laughs> playing playing that uh um which one was it? It wasn't the the pulp fiction one, the uh um uh, uh, maybe it was in the club. Uh but uh, uh play, playing those vocal synthesis I had to keep on my on my timer iPad app, I had to just keep going F word, F word, S word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Did you have a good weekend, Juice? Mm, Does the concept yeah. of weekend still I I fell off a scooter. I fell off a scooter and I hurt my hand. Oh no. So I got a fat hand here. Oh, I don't it know is... if you can Ooh. if you can tell. It is a little bloated. Yeah, Aww. it's a fatter hand. Sorry, buddy. And it's got like I'm like bruising up, uh -huh. like there. But aside from that, not bad. You know, uh, uh, got to see, uh, uh, you know, got to got to, uh, you know, unwind a little bit, and um, you know, then back at it. Put out um, a new episode of Crystal. Oh, nice! What movie did I you like? Uh, uh, did you cover Mister Saturday Night? Oh, which uh, was a, a, a bomb. Uh, it was Billy Crystal's directorial debut uh, where he spends half the movie in old man makeup. He does? Yes. He plays the like an older version of himself and a younger version of himself uh, where like when he was in the 50s, he was, uh, you know, this uh, this hot. Um, you know, television star, and now he's like an old, broke down comic. Huh. But, um, is there uh anything we want to do about the internet? Is there anything to be done about the internet? Is is are you coming in, or are, sorry, are we coming in choppy to you? So yeah, you you guys fell to uh, a Picasso or impressionist style, like about uh -huh. ten minutes into the show. Oh geez, I didn't. But I'm that. also watching the 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 stream here. Yeah, um, and like when yeah. it's good, it's fucking HD. When it's uh, bad, it is like unwatchable. Yeah, so we, I don't we haven't getting there's... some hiccups today. We're at a nine percent drop rate, which is not ideal. We can we can try and call you back on Skype and see if that does it. We're we're getting a hiccup now. Oh no, are we having internet? Yes. Oh damn it. Um, that's that's super bad. Yeah, it's not uh, it's it's not you know being out for minutes at a time. Well, but I saw a couple of flare ups during. Yeah. Um, uh, we, let me let me try and restart uh, well, the here, Skype hold call. On. With let me. Uh, you. How about that? Yeah. And and we'll see if that. Yeah. Happen. Here, hold is, on. Is it the Opal side or the Skype side? Uh, oh. it's the the can it's it, Justin's video from us is not good, and we're not getting all the upload out. Hmm. Uh, Sorry, I'm I'm running a speed test now. Okay. Which is probably messing something up. A little bit. Um. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah.
So I've run a few speed tests over Wi-Fi, but never gotten below six, mm -hmm. which should be enough. But there seemed to be some discussion on the Twitch chat, whether or not it was our end or Twitch's. Uh, I can tell that it is on our end. It's on our end? Yeah. Because um, we, we are still using the lower bitrate uh, upload settings right now, and we would still get... We, we, I mean, we have 10% drop frames, so 10% of our show did not go out. Um, and so some of that, you know, it picks up and the buffer catches it and, and it's not Man. a huge deal, but yeah, it's been... That's a, that's a double bummer after like yeah. doubling down on, on the business class. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh Well, I mean I think yeah, there's there's definitely a, a larger thing that we can uh uh look to kinda Sorry, I'm not hearing Justin yet. Oh. Uh the audio is continuous, but I'm getting uh video delays. Yeah, like so I'm I'm watching the um the soundless version mm -hmm. and I'll tell you like now it looks great. Like it looks like we're all in the same studio. It's awesome. Yeah, it's solid uh, now. But I I don't know what it, it just uh just intermittently we would almost completely lose our our connection here. Yeah. Well, uh, we can uh we can figure that out going forward. Yeah. But until guess, then, let's the let's, let's 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 knock out a real quick after thing so I can eat before the happy hour. Yeah, boy. Oh right. You and me both. Yeah. I haven't eaten all day. Okay. Well, we'll try to keep this twenty or thirty minutes or so. I think we had even tighter, tighter. As we can go shorter. That, yeah. <laughs> there, you don't have. You can. You can, just, you can go shorter than that if you like. Okay. Uh, then let's get into after things. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Justin Robert Young, hey, and Brian Brushwood. Holy cow! Uh, do do we want to make this a tech minute corner hour kind of thing? Like, uh, because it's it's so curious to me that we're on the one hand we've never had better audio than we've ever had, uh, yeah, and also we've never had worse audio than we've ever had. Worse <laughs> video at this moment. I mean, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, everything. So, like, so like, for the weird things audience, because the weird things audience is not. Uh, maybe heard any of sure, this? Sure, sure, sure. So right now, bring at, them up to speed. At, at HQ, we're having some some connection issues, like like many people across the country, uh, uploading content. You know, a lot of the internet is not uh, um, what is it symmetrical in terms of uh, being able to upload and yeah. download. Uh, and because the pipes are super congested, we we've, we've just been having a real tough time getting even you know a solid five or six megabits up for. The video stream and handling Skype, and we have this new box, which uh, I think people did did get a, a listen to last week and and got a fuller uh, experience of it this week, uh, where we're able to have a separate, a discrete audio call uh, between sides. And so Justin's coming in a little more, a little closer to his source audio. Uh, Andrew was last week as well, um, and and that is uh, a is not a huge bandwidth hog. It's a it's still a compressed audio, so uh, that's not a huge deal, but it affects our ability to send a complete stream, a continuous stream out to Twitch. It affects Justin's ability to see us. You know, when our upload goes down, uh, we turn into, you know, Minecraft. Uh, and and so we've, this is now week two, week three of, uh, ish, of various issues and trying to solve it. Uh, even last week, Brian, right, they, uh, the Spectrum came by, our provider Spectrum came by and installed a business class. Line. Yeah, right, right, right now we actually have two, totally, <laughs> there were, two boxes in the IT closet. There was a cable modem and our router. There was, when I came in the other day, like seven. Over seven. There's a lot <laughs> seven. of them. Wow. Like two of them zip tied together. And when we were asked, like, like when we asked, like, like, what is this? They were like, uh, oh, that's your complimentary hotspot. They're like, why does it have its own independent connection to the internet? They're like, because mm -hmm. that's their that's their crazy spectrum network one. Yeah. That's the the general hope is that having business class, I mean, unfortunately we're paying for both right now, but the the hope is that having business class will give us the ability to get somebody different on the phone line when stuff goes down and, and somebody with a different set of tools, because it mm -hmm. looks like they gave us the exact same router, but 
I assume with a little whisper, you know, like your platinum elite, you know, somewhere on there. Yeah. And, you know, at least from how it it used to be, it it, it was not like you were promised any, any sort of prioritization or a better, a better data handling on the, on the connection side. It's not like your data would be more important than Susie down the street. Yeah. Uh, what well, you mean under the residential? Re- yes. Sorry. Like, yeah. B- business on, on, on the residential is just like, hey man, y'all's in the same pool, and if all of you are swimming at the same time, there's going to be a lot of bodies around each other. Whereas business class had the implicit, we will make sure that you are never more than thirty five megabits away from another person, or or never yeah. less than that, whatever. But that was implicit, not explicit. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, even Justin, you you were you you were trying to um, what was it? Your the wireless uh, what is it, the satellite internet like uh, thing? Yeah, not satellite. It it is it is wireless, but it it's a, a point to point connection. So a, a you know fiber line comes in, and so you have a super super strong connection, and then that is connected to my place, not by a wire, but rather by a wireless connection between two dishes and so Mm. uh that is you know it it gives you a few advantages like my upload is insane like my upload is now like 230 up uh versus like 130 down which is insane uh the unreliability is that if it rains you know, uh, or something happens to the dish, then I'm screwed, right? It either degrades or it goes out entirely. And the company, while very nice, is very much a mom and pop ISP. Uh, So that is technically the backup now, although that is the primary one that we stream from. It has gone down twice, once because of... uh, internet tomfoolery where somebody was after the install, somebody unplugged something else. Uh, And then once because an unknown thing that was not in our building needed to be changed because it was down, Mm -hmm. but we still have our Comcast. So push comes to shove. We, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if this goes down with monkey brains, then we switch to Comcast. uh, And that way, Ashley, who is now doing a lot more uploading, uh, you know, just in terms of video calls and stuff like that, uh, you know, can can have her own dedicated connection. Although, to be fair, I don't know how much her doing anything really matters. I think this is more of a throttling that happens from the ISP side. Yeah, I mean the the sense the sense that we got is that in general across the country. This is an issue, right? As as more people are moving to working remote, uploading files, doing video conferencing all the time, everyone holding their own, say, happy hours, uh, a- a- any number of things where suddenly people are uploading a lot more data than they ever had before. Yeah, that's one of the weird things is that by by joining the business class club, uh, number one, not only are we doubling our expenditures, but number two, really all we're joining, we're not even joining, we're joining a network that promises less but promises you'll at least get that. So there, there's the the fake promise of a gigabit uh, that never shows up, and there's the fake promise of about 40 megabits upstream what, that also never shows up. Whereas on business, it's the quote-unquote real promise of 600 megabits and the quote-unquote real promise of 35 megabits up for roughly the same cost. But really, I guess we're just entering this squeaky wheel club, right? Where it's like we get the right to uh, be heard when yeah. we don't get what we're promised. Yes. And and like, were those numbers that you just mentioned, like were those explicit promises yeah. or was that just someone yeah. on the phone? To, I mean, people on the phone will talk. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess we'll find out. I mean, it's well, like, no, I was going to say, we are about to find out because that is, I, I could, I could see the light in Brian's eyes die as people in the chat room after we went through this uh, uh you know effort to to ensure the safeguard of this uh uh now all of a sudden people are complaining about like oh we're getting the same drop frames because we did not go through all that effort that we went through I mean, so we, we could have yeah, the same damn problem. We, we've already cataloged uh, calls one through eight. Get ready for a new chapter, uh, call number nine, happening very soon. Coming coming yeah. to a Twitch stream near you. Oh, jeez. 
Um, yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it's, well, and, it's, and, and by the way, mm -hmm. this is like, you know, without getting too far into it, uh, uh, there's a conversation that I need to have with Brian and Bryce at some point today, uh, about a business opportunity That's that right. is reliant on, on, on us being on, with a straight face, being able to say, we will deliver a consistent stream right. at the time of your choosing. Yeah. And, and, and for not a small amount of money, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like for, for a, a kind of thing that's worth screaming and yelling at a tech and making sure that all the bits get where they need to go kind of money. I'll tell you and, what, it's definitely the kind of money that you don't get to bring up on the residential helpline, but you do get to bring up on the business class line. <laughs> well, and that's, and that's the problem is that it is what what now we have to figure out is how much of this is actually solvable by spectrum, right? Like, did they sell you a solution for which they cannot provide? And if that's the case, then it's like, okay, technically, is there anything else that can happen to get this internet more stable? Because a, a lot of people are looking at, at, at that right now. And, uh, it's not right now, you know, there's no clear cut answer. Nobody is selling the, the sure shot solution. And, and the tough thing, you know, I think on one of those night attack happy hours that you guys did talking about it, I remember there was someone in the chat who was also in the discord and I'm sorry that I've forgotten who's was saying this, but like there, there have been many calculations on the ISP side on how much can they overcommit? How much can the ISPs overcommit to the customers of, of their capacity, right? Right. Like, because most people won't use a lot of upload. Most people won't use all of their download all of the time. And so there are, uh, to, to have heard this person say that there are calculations, there are, there are actual formulas of you can have this many people on your, on this line and they will get a reasonable amount of service. Well, now that more and more people are online out of necessity, that math goes out the window. That that is not just overselling seats on the plane. Now everyone's got to get off the island, right? Um, yeah. So it's it's uh, uh, thank you for everyone who's been who's been you know it's affected some of the shows and and we appreciate you you being uh, uh, troopers and 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 continuing to support us because uh, uh, we don't love ha that this is the case either. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, uh, it I guess that's the other bummer too is like we all know that there's an other side of this experience, but. The only way to get there is over time. You know, you got to do uh, little pokes and prods and changes and see where you end up. And so, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you to everybody being patient, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we did get a, a ghostly message from Andrew Maine. Oh! Uh, the ghost of a person from a different reality. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he wondered, what shelter-in-place work habits have you picked up that you think will stay with you once we uh, uh, are not sheltering in place? I would say, can I tell you, I had a dream. I, I have a recurring dream uh -oh. that um, if you say nightmare, it makes it sound too bad. But we've talked about this before. The recurring dream is always I'm doing a live stage show and it goes bad. I had a new variation on that dream. And the new variation was that I found out I was double booked to do two live shows in the same day. And I spent the majority of the dream, I went to one university and checked out their tech and they were all like, we're really excited for the show. And then I went to another university and they checked out the tech and it's like, yeah, that'll be great. Uh, then I went home and went to sleep and, and my alarm goes off in the dream at 5.40 a.m. And I realize uh, I have to go do both shows in one day. And then it hits me, wait a minute, maybe instead of April 25th, they meant august 25th yeah that's probably what they meant <laughs> and in fact maybe they're not even on the same day and i turned around and rolled over and went to sleep so anyway all of this is a long way to say that i think that subconsciously i am processing the deep satisfaction and joy i am getting from not being on the road from instead just being here with all of you fine gentlemen that it's it's been really really great and that is a gift that takes a little bit to wrap your mind around where it's like uh it's fine and great and and to be honest justin i i think that to some degree our new 
audio equipment and the increased uh, perceived intimacy, the the, the presentness yeah. between the two of us. I think I think that's a big part of it. Where it's like I I just feel. I feel fundamentally different about being here. It feels like we're all together in a way that didn't feel that way three weeks ago. Mm. I mean, certainly. I think that uh, in terms of communication there, you realize how much it even affects what you're saying and when you're saying it and uh, how much there is frustration that can build up uh, when you're in like an I go, now you go, now I go, now you go kind of uh setting as opposed to where we are now where i can actually like you can hear me when i try to to communicate uh, uh with you while you're talking if even just to do like a yeah uh-huh like like there's little verbal cues that kind of like uh can build up into a rhythm over time uh but yeah no it's it's um it's been it's been great and and it feels so much more uh professional and exciting uh, I, I would say in terms of uh, quarantine stuff, um, I've enjoyed like getting out of my, like I've enjoyed my roof. I've got a roof that I can just bring a chair up to and just kind of hang out wow. for a while, especially when it's like during the summer and it's nice out. Like uh, I've, I've realized that like there's a way that I can take a break with that doesn't mean leaving the apartment and going somewhere. Uh, and I think that will probably stay around for for a little bit. Um, but it, it's hard to say what I've what I'll learn because I was effectively kind of working from home anyway. Yeah. Right. It's, so it, like really, this can, this has killed more of my free time than it has my work time. Can I ask like uh like as as often as you've mentioned going to the roof, I've always worried about like. Anybody else figure out that the roof is a rad place to hang out? Is 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 there a territorial problem with that? Because that's sort of a common ground. So I go. You you're familiar with my roof. There's yep. the one side that kind of looks out into like civilization, there. and then there's another that looks back into the kind of neighborhood and the hills. Uh, the front one is far more scenic, and so I have seen far more people up there on that side. I eschew that immediately because I am an enlightened uh, roof veteran and I uh, uh, go to the back. In fact, I don't know if I've told you this, but uh, there was some complaints about people smoking on the roof. Oh, no. <laughs> How unfortunate. Uh, and somebody, friend of the roof, decided to buy one of those plastic uh, uh receptacle things that has like a bucket and it's just like oh a an ash fire with a yeah with like a little hole in the top so you just kind of put the cigarette in the hole yeah and they've just put it there and they've been emptying the uh the the bucket of uh butts yeah. every every once in a while and uh yeah uh, uh so uh that friend has incentivized made it more comfortable for the smokers to say on one side of the roof. So the real enlightened <laughs> souls can have the back of the roof all to themselves. Dude, uh, uh, we're not going to do a better story than that to punch out on. I, I, unless, <laughs> unless I, 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 what, what's your habit? Uh, I'm, I'm going out and taking a walk more. I'm, I'm going out and walk, walking more often, not just as like a means of like, um, locomotion exercising oh. but <laughs> but but just to um get some fresh air or to like decompress like i can i you know when i have moments where i can feel myself spooling up i can i can you know throw on the running shoes and go and take a lap around the apartment complex or two in some cases um because you get cooped up inside i already get cooped up inside now i can't even go to the gym or i can't you know even go out or, or see people and uh, replacing it with uh, or, or reintroducing, you know, the very low impact, low cost of uh, just taking a nice walk. Uh, uh, it's bigger than it sounds. Bigger than it sounds. Yeah. So um, if you've got any, why don't you send them in? Neshcom at gmail.com. Use after things in the email subject line. What habits 
from working from home are going to stick with you guys. Man, I would love to hang out longer, but we got 24 minutes until happy hour. <laughs> this is our only chance to eat. Well, food. it doesn't have to be so bald faced. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, like, like if it were up to me, we would just keep going. It kind of okay. So, uh, for <laughs> my impression of Justin <laughs> no, Robert, no, 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 no. This is this where I'm gonna. This is the hill I'm gonna die on. No, I no, deserve no, no. By the way, to here, eat at, some at, food today, oh, which I have not done. Things, <laughs> after things, after things is about getting the un unvarnished uh the unvarnished business side and the unvarnished business side is food <laughs> okay there we go it's not some mystical minutes. choice it's the people no, here on the on the screen made the choice all right for brian yes. and Justin Robert. i'm bryce right. castillo love you it's been after <laughs> hooray after all right everybody we're gonna shut the stream off so that these guys can go eat their foods yeah and uh, do the happy hour. Thank you guys so much for joining. They'll be back in a few minutes here with another happy hour. Bye, y'all. See ya.